Nothing is as it seems with this. There are some things that they're just borderline lying about, and I'll get into the detail of that. Come on, Twitch, get it together. You're better than this. Your creators aren't stupid. Hey, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. It's been a little while since my last video, and one of the reasons is, as the keener eyes viewers will know, I've changed my background here, and that's because I've changed the house that I live in. Because guess what? Having a baby just wasn't hard enough. I had to do something else to make life even more difficult. It's a much bigger house. I've got a lot more space to work with. We've got a stream room and also a podcast slash content room. Now to business. Twitch have recently announced they will be allowing partners to stream on multiple different platforms and that includes in some cases the ability to do it at the same time. In this video we're going to be doing a deep dive into what exactly Twitch have said and what it means for partners, what it means for affiliates and really reading between the lines at what Twitch are trying to achieve with this announcement and this new policy. As always if you do find this video useful I really appreciate a like on the video and feel free to subscribe to the channel. Let's go! So first up, what about the Twitch announcement to allow partners to be able to multi-stream? Well, there was this announcement here. Starting today, you're now allowed to create live content on other platforms. Sounds good, right? A lot of Twitch partners have complained about this in the past. It's been a real bone of contention. This means that you will have more flexibility to explore how to use different off-platform features to build your community and interact with streamers off Twitch. They basically go on here to say that when they developed the partner program, it was a long time ago and it's now not fit for purpose. They're saying here that they'll stop enforcing the agreement for exclusivity of partners right away and they're going to update the contract in due course in spring next year. They also go on to say that to clarify, we do not allow simulcasting. I don't think anyone really calls it that. It's called multi-streaming, right? On web-based Twitch-like services that support streaming for extended periods of time, such as YouTube and Facebook. Now, they specifically drop YouTube and Facebook here, which is obviously Twitch's main competitors, but they do also specifically drop TikTok and Instagram Live to say that because they are mobile services, you are fine to stream on those at the same time as Twitch. Basically, Twitch have seen that other platforms have grown significantly off the back of the popularity of Instagram Live and TikTok Lives. What's happened here is a lot of people have been incredibly successful at sex? <laughs> incredibly sex? <laughs> incredibly successful on TikTok and they've grown their Twitch channel as a result of being on TikTok and Instagram. However, they don't want to go the whole hog. They actually want to say, yeah, but we don't want to encourage users to move over to YouTube gaming or Facebook Facebook gaming. So there kind of is like a halfway house here that says, all right, anything that's going to benefit Twitch and grow the platform will allow it. Anything that's going to damage Twitch's popularity, we're not going to allow that. Make no mistake here, this announcement has got nothing to do with the creators. This announcement is a Twitch PR stunt to increase their popularity, increase their reach, to get in the news and to use tools like Instagram and like TikTok to get great growth of Twitch, whilst simultaneously making sure they make it clear that YouTube gaming and Facebook gaming are not allowed. Definitely still a competitor of Twitch. Make no mistake here, this is not something that Twitch is doing to help you as a partner or you as an affiliate. This is something that Twitch are doing to help themselves. It couldn't be any clearer. Now there's a URL here and I'll drop this in the description below so that you can take a further look because this may change over time. But there is a partner exclusivity frequently asked questions here and it's worth us just breaking down some of the things in this article. First, they say that partners and affiliates are allowed to create live content on other platforms. Well, that's very nice of you, Twitch, but you do not own the live space. Of course, people can create live content if they want to. They almost don't need to say that. I don't know why they're even telling people they're allowed. We don't need your permission, Twitch, to make live content on other platforms. But Twitch used the guise of building your community as justification for allowing you to actually create content on other platforms like TikTok. When the reality here is that TikTok has driven so many new viewers and users into Twitch that they are seeing platforms like TikTok as a benefit to improving the reach of Twitch. So who does this apply to? Basically, they say further down here that it doesn't impact affiliates at all. The affiliate terms have always been aligned with the changes that are announced for partners. However, that isn't exactly the case and I will explain precisely why affiliates are impacted 
affected by this change later on in the video. Twitch say here that it applies to the vast majority of partners and if you're able to view the partner agreement then you'll see the new updated agreement and the announcement on your dashboard. They go on here to say that you can if you want to turn off your live stream on Twitch and then immediately go and live stream elsewhere which I think for partners there was a period of time where you couldn't stream elsewhere in a live basis. It's a very weird thing because a lot of Twitch partners are actually relatively small. There aren't a huge amount by proportion of Twitch partners that are also using it to make their living. It's only a fraction of Twitch partners that are dedicated 100% to Twitch as their career and content. Many others either have side jobs or rely on YouTube revenue or other forms of revenue to prop up their content earnings. Often it's the case even for the partners that are maining on Twitch that their main income isn't even from Twitch. So it's really weird that this article is coming across like they're giving people permission to live stream elsewhere when everyone knows that they can live stream anywhere. And now we start to get to some of the juicy bit here. We do not allow simulcasting on web-based Twitch-like services that support streaming for extended periods of time, such as YouTube and Facebook, because we believe engaging two streams at once will lead to a sub-optimal experience for your community. However, we know that many of you want to use services to grow your, your community, so simulcasting in short form mobile services like TikTok or Instagram Live is allowed. They're basically saying that we think the experience for our viewers on Twitch is going to be diminished if you're also streaming on Facebook gaming or YouTube gaming. However, the reality is Twitch has got a huge market share in the streaming market on platforms like that and Twitch are just afraid that anyone that is casting to two different platforms at once, for example, YouTube and Twitch, people will port over from Twitch, start to get familiar with the YouTube gaming platform and it may stick on them and they then may see more of the share of that person's time. And this is what it comes down to. Twitch don't want to port people from Twitch to YouTube gaming. They don't want to allow that highway of transition from someone using one platform to another unless they don't see that platform as a threat. TikTok they don't see as a threat because only a small portion of people that watch Twitch will also be watching TikTok at the same time in the same way. But because TikTok is primarily a mobile service and not a desktop based service, Twitch don't really see it as a threat and therefore they're allowing people to port people over from TikTok to Twitch. Now, a lot of TikTok users will not have used Twitch before. And therefore, because of the reach of TikTok, the gain that Twitch is likely to make is actually going to be a lot higher than what they would lose. However, that's very different with Facebook gaming and YouTube gaming. And that's because a lot of people by proportion will have used Twitch and not used YouTube live and will not have used Facebook live. And what that means is there's more of a risk that they lose users by allowing it than as is the case with TikTok. In fact, with TikTok, they're seeing that as something that will grow Twitch. What's basically happened here is Twitch have pretty much locked most partners now into a 50% revenue split, which was the same as what affiliates get. And in return, what you get from Twitch is that you're able to stream across different platforms. But the problem is Twitch have only gone halfway with this. You're only allowed to stream on certain platforms and it happens to just be those platforms that will benefit Twitch. So who's really benefiting here? Is it the creator or is it really Twitch? It seems to me very much like it's Twitch that's benefiting from this policy. So what this means for partners is that essentially you're getting paid less and you still really have the same struggles that you always did have in terms of not being able to get the same reach. Now think about what being able to multi-stream allows you to do. It allows you to make one piece of live content with one piece of your time, but push it out to many, many different platforms. That is a really good use of your your time. It's an effective, efficient use of your time. Obviously, people want to be efficient. Creators want to make the most from their time. It's an incredibly hard job to be a content creator. So the issue here really is about how Twitch have framed this and what you are and are not allowed to do. When you're a partner on Twitch now, you can still use TikTok to grow your Twitch. But people have been doing that for years anyway. Literally all partners use TikTok to grow their Twitch. In many cases, some of the biggest creators on Twitch are people that have started life as maining on TikTok. So this policy just really plays into what Twitch has had to deal with in the last couple of years anyway. Not only that, but Twitch have never really enforced the multi-streaming thing where TikTok is concerned anyway. So really all this is doing is Twitch saying, well, we haven't been enforcing it anyway, but now we're telling you that we're not enforcing it. I'm sure you've seen it if you're on TikTok. There are frequent
importantly, people, partners even, that are live on TikTok at the same time that they are live on Twitch. And what they will frequently do, people will ask you to go from TikTok to the Twitch experience and follow there. And often they will do a shout out to encourage people to do that. Now think about what this is. This is TikTok being a feeder for Twitch. TikTok is like the gateway live content drug to Twitch. And then Twitch becomes like the hard drug when you get to really embed in different communities and then veg out and watch content all day, every day. This time, just not on TikTok. You'll be doing it on Twitch instead. So the bottom line for partners here is that Twitch has taken with one hand some of your earnings and they've not really given anything back in the other hand, which would have been some form of contractual benefit. Now, I know that a lot of my YouTube viewers here will be Twitch affiliates and therefore you you're going to want to know how this affects you. So how does this announcement affect affiliates? Twitch have been quite misleading here. Within this article here, they've said that it doesn't affect you if you're an affiliate because affiliate terms have always been aligned with the changes we announced for partners. What are they specifically talking about? It's this clause here, live content exclusivity and i will link this in the description below just in case you want to take a little look for yourself now let's break down what this clause is and bear in mind this clause is still here right now and they're not saying they will be updating affiliate clauses now i have done other similar videos like this so some people may already know but i've got 15 years of contracts experience so not only do i make some youtube content and do a little bit of streaming i have got a lot of experience with contracts so let me just try and break this down for you as simply as possible so you understand exactly what this clause means. So first they're talking about audio and visual work that you choose to provide as user content. And they're calling this live Twitch content. They're basically saying as soon as you stream to Twitch, it's live Twitch content. And that is like an entity of its own. And it's how you treat that specific content. Now this is from the moment you go live through to the end of your stream. And then also for a full 24 hour period after that, which is known as the live content exclusivity or the exclusivity period. They say here that such live Twitch content is exclusive to Twitch during the exclusivity period, which as I've just said, is also for that 24 hour period after you go live and it includes from the beginning of your initial broadcast until the end of the broadcast. What this affiliate agreement here says is that you are not otherwise able to or they don't permit and they don't authorize any third party to broadcast, stream, distribute, exhibit and otherwise make available that live content in any manner. So they're saying here that that exclusivity period still applies on any platform. They don't make reference to mobile versus desktop here, and they don't make reference to specific platforms like YouTube gaming, Facebook gaming, TikTok, or Instagram live. So this does affect affiliates because as you can see here, this clause is still live and they make no mention of changing this clause. So what does this actually mean for partners and for affiliates? Well, it basically means if you're an affiliate or a partner, according to how the land and lies today and it's the 25th of August 2022 you cannot multi-stream if it's to another desktop based live streaming platform like YouTube or Facebook gaming I think people already know that the problem is Twitch have framed it as though it doesn't really apply to affiliates or there's no change to affiliates and that just isn't the case actually as things stand today you would be breaking your contract even if you went live on TikTok and it's really dumb that they've done this they would have been better to announce this at a future point in time when they've aligned all their contracts contracts and they've cleared it up for the majority of their user base. And for those of you that don't know, the majority of creators on Twitch are either affiliates or non-affiliates. As a contract guy, I'm not comfortable with this. This is a little bit disingenuous to say that we kind of are okay with your multi-streaming, but only in certain situations. And they leave it very woolly, very gray. Facebook gaming has the means to watch by mobile. So if I'm streaming only to Facebook mobile users, is that allowed? versus desktop users. It's very, very great. I don't think it's very good what Twitch has done here. It's very clear to me that what Twitch have done, put in place a policy that benefits them because it pulls users from TikTok and Instagram, but they're still enforcing people to not multi-stream to Facebook and to YouTube gaming. What this really means and reading between the lines is Twitch are very much threatened by YouTube gaming. They are threatened by Facebook gaming and they should be because YouTube is one of the biggest search engines in the whole world. And also Facebook is giving 
creators 100% of their revenue, whereas Twitch are only giving 50% of their revenue to their creators. And that includes now partners as of earlier on in the year. I just think it's very, very cynical of Twitch to frame this as being a good thing for their creators when it's really obvious that it's something that benefits them and not the creator. Come on, Twitch, get it together. You're better than this. Your creators aren't stupid. There are people out there that are able to break these things down, do the right thing, let people multi-stream across different platforms without restriction. So it remains to be seen exactly what Twitch will actually do with that thing that they think they've done but haven't really done it properly and there's a lot of nuance still there i think there's still a lot of gray area and hopefully i've done a good job of explaining that and also within the bounds of my very vast experience with contracts hopefully you found it useful again if you did hit the like button feel free to subscribe to the channel and see you later